50th episode of the Korea podcast. I'm your host, Jack, located in Ulsan, South Korea. Today is the 7th of March. Um, I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. The Living Korea podcast is a podcast on which I talk about anything and everything related to living and working in South Korea. Um, and on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about what is happening in Korea um, in regards or what is Korea doing in regards to Russia's invasion of, um, of the Ukraine. Uh, let me just have a quick look here to make sure that the sound is okay. Oh, if this is the first time visiting the channel, make sure to smash up the like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you do, because if I have to watch Adrian Hill once again after I type in Living Korea, I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. So do me a favor, uh, smash up the likes on the video, share, subscribe to the channel, share the love, um, and let's prevent Adrian Hill to be the first goddamn uh, appearance when you type in Living Korea, stealing the thunder from my channel's name. Unbelievable. I'm still looking for that video so I can check the sound. Where is it? Not her goddamn video. My bloody video. <laughs> this podcast. Where are we? Are we on? Podcast. Alrighty. We're good. We're good to go. Sounds good. Alrighty. I hope everybody had a good weekend. We're back to... Uh, another four-day week because uh, Wednesday is election day and uh, on election day everything's closed it's a red day so well so that's gonna be it um, the Korea podcast uh, or what is this yeah the Korea podcast <clears throat> is sponsored by Shane English Korea if you would like to uh, have your own language school in South Korea then please get in touch with me my wife and I are the master franchisees for the region of South Korea it's a turnkey business with an entire curriculum ready to go uh, all you need to do is plug in turn and off you go a uh, quick announcement here from um, Where is it here? If you are interested in learning calligraphy, uh, my friend, good friend Lisa, who is a strong supporter of the channel, thank you Lisa, um, is providing uh, the opportunity for you to take some online um, uh, calligraphy classes. The You can follow, the link should be provided below the video, you can follow the link to, to register. Uh, just fill in your name and stuff. Uh, if you'd like to join the class, then please do it quickly. Um, as uh, for the March and April session, uh, classes are filling up quickly. And also, Lisa sends out uh, a package that you can actually use um, in your home in order to uh, to complete your tasks. So uh, it takes a couple of weeks, I guess, to send out the packages. So if you are interested in, in participating in these workshops in March, March 10th and 24th and April 7th and... Uh, uh, 21st uh, so those are upcoming so if you'd like to be in in I guess March 24th then register now um, and uh, there you have it I'm not exactly sure how Elisa holds it if it's online but she does send out packages so you can participate and there you go all right good 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 all righty um, so, uh, stre fresh off the press, um, here's an interesting announcement, or an announcement, yeah. Uh, apparently, quarantine for overseas arrivals may be soon, become soon exempt from, uh, um, from quarantine. <laughs> what did I just say? If you're arriving from abroad into South Korea, then you may soon be, uh, you may soon be able to bypass the whole quarantine thing. Uh, and so this is JTBC, it's in Korean, so uh, Google Translate did the automatic translation and it's a bit wonky, but here it goes like this. Uh, priority applies to holders of domestic vaccination records. Only vaccines approved by the WTO are allowed. I think this is the WHO supposed to be. Again, this is a translation from Korean, so it's a bit wonky. Exceptions to submission of PCR negative confirmation are also possible if there is a history of confirmation 10 to 40 days before entry. I'm not sure if that's 10 to, to 40 days. Not sure. Oh, what? Vaccination? Maybe. Okay. PCR. Hmm. 
The quarantine authorities will finalize a plan to exempt the self-quarantine for seven days only for overseas arrivals who have completed vaccination against the novel coronavirus infection at the earliest this weekend. Uh, according to the sense, so basically the vaccinations may come into, oh sorry, the exemption for um, quarantine may come into effect this upcoming weekend. Let's see, how old is this? This is from just today. So I guess the upcoming weekend, not this past weekend. Maybe this past weekend. Um, According to the Central uh, Accident Response Headquarters of the Ministry of Health and Welfare, the quarantine exemption for overseas arrivals will be applied first to those who have a history of vaccination in South Korea. So if you've been um, if you've been vaccinated in Korea, then you should or you may be able to skip, you know, uh, vaccines, getting vaccinated. Uh, so skip uh, uh, being quarantined. According to the central, um, okay, uh, the target vaccine uh, is only expected to be approved by the World Health Organization. Uh, as a result, people who have received China Sinopharm or Sinovac will be exempt, exempted for from quarantine. But those who have been vaccinated against Russia Sputnik V will, and I assume this mean uh, this is meant to say, will not be exempt from quarantine. So if you've got Russia Sputnik. You're still in the doghouse. If you got Chinese uh, Sinopharm, Sinovac, or um, Korea is now allowing Novak, no, Novavac, Novavax as well. Uh, Korean made vaccine that's uh, protein based rather than uh, mRNA. Um, so that's good news. So if you have one of those, you're good to go. Um, I think, well, not yet, but uh, you, you, you may be able to bypass the seven day quarantine. Uh, Currently, Koreans who have entered from overseas or foreigners uh, staying for a long period of time must self-quarantine and foreigners who stay for a short period of time must quarantine for seven days. In this regard, Un, uh, Jung Un Kyung, head of the Central Quarantine uh, Countermeasures Headquarters, said at a regular briefing for reporters on the 28th of last month, we're reviewing exemption from self-quarantine for inbound travelers who have completed vaccination. I believe that the purpose has been achieved. I will pursue these measures at an, an, uh, an appropriate time. So I don't know if, so from today, the seventh exceptions uh, to the submission of PCR negative confirmation for overseas arrivals was, will also be enforced. Uh, the central quarantine uh, Countermeasure headquarters announced that from 00 today, Koreans who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 within 10 to 14, 40 days prior before the departure date and have a history of treatment will be managed as an exemption uh, to submitting a PCR negative confirmation. So basically, I think if you were exposed uh, to COVID-19, you're counted into a type of what uh, uh, natural immunity category. Uh, as a result, among Koreans coming to Korea from abroad, Koreans with such a history do not need to submit a PCR test negative confirmation before boarding the aircraft. In order to, to prove this, you can submit data that can tell the date of confirmation, such as a quarantine notice or a release letter issued in Korea or abroad. Previously, quarantine authorities made it mandatory for all inbound travelers to submit a negative confirmation letter upon entry since July last year to prevent the influx of confirm, confirmed COVID-19 cases from overseas. Uh, management overseas uh, entrance using the self-quarantine safety protection app was also suspended on the 21st of last month. With this measure, overseas entrance do not uh, have to install the self-quarantine safety protection app at airports. So, in any case, uh, things are moving forward with this thing. Uh, from today, quarantine authorities have used the quarantine information pre-entry systems to prevent overseas entrants entering Incheon Airport and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> uh, Lisa, hey Lisa, welcome. And awesome Victor Sawyer, welcome Victor. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm not exactly sure if based on this article, we can assume that quarantine uh, is now suspended for those who have been vaccinated um, with vaccines approved by WHO or not. Uh, I guess that's happening. If it hasn't happened yet, then it will happen next week. But um, things are slowly beginning to relax, which is nice to see, finally. Um, but the prejudice 
against non-vaccinated people will probably remain uh, for a longer pre period of time until until a time when I guess even that becomes redundant. The numbers of uh, cases in Korea has been spiking uh, for well for a pretty long period of time. Um, so yeah okay so what's gonna be what, what are we gonna talk about today today uh wildfires uh, corona updates uh what else is there uh sanctions korean sanctions uh, on russia and uh, a little bit of uh tech innovation uh news coming up yeah 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 so yeah make sure to smash up the likes yo uh remember smash up the likes and feed the feed, man. When you type in Living Korea, make sure you search out this channel. I don't want to see freaking Adrian Hill coming up uh, as, as a YouTuber in Korea. She's not even in, in Korea anymore, man. She was here for a year, probably, bunking about with her massive subscriber count. And now, you know, she's reaping the benefits of of, of the um, uh, SEO keyword. God damn it. Living Korea. All right. Anyway, <laughs> wildfire engulfs South Korea's eastern coast, affecting area size of 20,000 football fields, man. There are massive fires going on. And I thought this was somewhere in Onyang. I think in Onyang and near Ulsan, there are also some fires happening. But a massive wildfire continues to spread unabated in Uljin. Uljin is... Where is Uljin? Wait, there is a... Yongsang province. Uljin. Uljin, Korea. Let's have a look at uh, Mapidi Do maps. Uljin, Korea. Hebek Mountain. Okay, that's like way up uh, north. Yeah. Uljin. What are we looking at here? Uljin. Yeah, that's uh, that's further up to the north. But apparently, this chunk of Korea is on fire right here. Whatever the reason that is, uh, whatever reason, where, where are we here? Okay, here we go. What did I just bypass? Oh, okay, okay. Northern uh, Bruins uh, in neighboring Samchok, Samchok village, uh, Gangwon province, which has led authority. Oh, wait a minute, this is like really close to Donghae. Wow, yeah, this is really close to where my friend lives, man. In a brief uh, briefing, believed. From Uljin at uh, 5 p.m. on Sunday, Korea Forest Service Minister Che Bongam said, Yongam said that the overall length of, of the blaze measured at around 60 kilometers, adding that 40% of the fire had been brought under control. This fire has been blazing since Friday. I remember a friend of my, a, a, a colleague, work colleague, um, showed me a, a video on Friday, even Thursday, of fires going on. So this has been going on since Friday, man. Over the weekend. And Uljin is, that's where the power plant is. I think there's an Uljin power plant, a nuclear power plant in Uljin. So it's not really the best place to, to have fires roaring like that, man, because things get out of hand. Um, man, that would not be great. That would not be great, yo. Um, what's happening with COVID? South Korea daily COVID-19 cases continue to stay above 200,000. The numbers are massive. I keep seeing posts of COVID cases on YouTube. Somebody, I don't know what group that is. There is a group that posts a very nice nifty map and I'm not going to pull it up here because who cares? Um, but there is a oh wait that we, we have, uh, I got stuff here. Oh, it's empty. Okay. Yeah, COVID num, hmm? Coronavirus update. Here we go. 446 million. Wow. Mother of holy macaroni. 6 million deaths. Recovered. 380 million recovered. So there you go. Uh, no ground for panic. <clears throat> Daily numbers. Where are we here? USA still leading the way. Uh, total deaths. Daily recovers. Uh, Russia. Russia is also getting bombarded. Uh, where's Ukraine? Out of curiosity. Ukraine. Look at that. Ukraine is actually doing better than Russia, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Choi also said... Okay, well, fires. We, we got fires. No, we are moved on. Um, South Korea's daily no uh, COVID-19 infection stayed above 200,000 for a fourth straight day, according to the country's health authorities on Monday, although the daily 
figures growth slowed down over the weekend. We knew this was going to happen. Fauci said a couple of months ago that uh, uh, Omicron will affect everyone on Earth. And it seems like everyone is affected. We've, we're losing students left and right, man. Kids are not coming in. Uh, my kids have been issued, the school has issued um, homemade kids, kits on a, uh, on a regular, oh, sorry, the home testing kits uh, twice a week. So my kids need to test themselves on Wednesday and then Sunday before coming to school, just to make sure that, uh, that they do not bring that stuff to school. But um, yeah, number of cases uh, spiked. Uh, I keep hearing more and more left and right, people are getting sick, kids are getting sick. Um, luckily, it's not that severe, Omicron isn't. And I guess with a high number of vaccines present in South Korea, um, you know, things are looking all right. Ben is here. Hey, Ben, welcome. Uh, according to the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency report on Monday, the country added 210,000 cases uh, during the 24 hours of Sunday. The total uh, caseload increased to... 4.666 million. Mm. Nearing a grim milestone of 5 million. What a milestone. And I guess it's going to be larger. It's going to be bigger. I mean, if, ever, if if the majority of people on Earth are supposed to be affected by it, then we're looking at, you know, uh, what, 7 billion at least, right? <laughs> so 5 million uh, was, would be a, a drop in the lake if, if, you know, in Korea's 57 million uh, sizable population. So that's what's happening. Uh, oh wait, are there any measures? The government expects the daily total to rebound as more people receive COVID-19 tests on weekends. Uh, the government currently sees that the daily figure could peak at as many as 350 infections a day by mid-March. And I guess maybe I want to say, venture out and say that oh, let's hope this happens because the more people become, you know, go through it um, and, and receive natural immunity, um, through the milder ver version of it, and from what I understand, it's uh, it's 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 kind of a harder version of uh, um, of the flu. Uh, although I did talk, have a conversation with my friend who told me about uh, cases, the 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 Delta ones that were a lot more severe, and he's he knows from personal experience, uh, or people who who he knows live in Europe, um, you know, 18 months later, and they're still suffering, uh, they're still going through. They're feeling the, the effects of the Delta variant. So the Omic uh, Omicron variant, uh, as was said, should uh, engulf the Earth and provide us with a, an easy way out of this mess, hopefully. So hopefully that's on the way. Uh, separate voting booths and ballot boxes scrapped for COVID-19 patients. There's something, uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but NEC responds to criticisms on its lackluster early voting management for infected voters. Uh, COVID-19 patients and those in quarantine will be allowed to vote after 6 p.m. at the same voting booths and ballot boxes as other voters on Wednesday. The elections watchdog said Monday after facing criticism for its lackluster management of uh, early voting booths and ballot boxes for infected voters over the weekend. Can we expect more voters, more people, more cases after that? Yeah, quite possibly. Uh, Quite possibly. Uh, the National Election Commission said following an emergency international meeting held Monday morning that COVID-19 patients and those under quarantine orders will be given between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. Wednesday to cast their votes at nearby polling stations and use the same ballot boxes as non-patients. Uh, because, you know, because otherwise it's, it's racism, discrimination, man, and it's not cool. Uh, besides, everybody's wearing masks anyway, right? What are they going to do? Take off their mask and start spicking and spitting and hawking all over the freaking booths? Don't know. Aside from a different time slot, COVID-19 patients will be uh, following the same guidelines and undergo the same voting procedures as regular voters. Fantastic. Okay, vaccination and not vaccinations. Um, elections happening this Wednesday. I'm not even sure. Can expats vote? I don't think we can, unless you are running, living on a uh, Korean passport here, all right? If you've been naturalized, then go drop your ballots, yo. Korea carriers stop, uh, carriers stop going to Moscow. What's happening here? 
Russia and the Ukraine, man. What a mess. I uh, had a talk with my friend uh, over the weekend, and he he's an avid reader of the news, and he follows all that stuff. And uh, I don't. Uh, I, I personally am very... I'm just disappointed in humanity. The fact that we still... Um, you know, that, that there's still leaders, if you want to call him that, uh, that 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 are elected and, and that are in power, who still uh, reach for for such resolutions for war, is, is beyond me, man. Like, I don't know. It's just, humanity is, is very disappointing for me. <clears throat> Lisa says, only citizens can vote for the president. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I knew that. I knew that, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> Residents can vote. Uh, uh, switch over to. Residents can vote in local municipal uh, elections, not federal. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. Thanks for that, Lisa. I didn't. I didn't know that. So if you're voting for, like, I guess, a, a mayor, local mayors, or whatever, then you're good to go as a non um, non citizen. But for the federal ones, no, no go. It's a no go. Uh, Right, so Korean carriers do not fly to Moscow. If you'd like to... Uh, actually, a friend <laughs> who, who's from England uh, mentioned that flying over, over Russia, uh, you know, would be something that he would probably not want to do. And he would take the time to make sure to fly longer routes to avoid flying over Russia right, right now. Pardon me. Uh, Korean airlines will temporarily stop flights to Moscow. And Asiana Airlines will stop refueling there. Uh, both are doing it because of the possibility of getting fuel, um, getting fuel in Moscow. Korean Airlines <clears throat> is the only local carrier that operates passenger flights between Incheon to Moscow, which it does every Thursday. The weekly flights will be suspended this week and next. Just two weeks? And then after two weeks, yeah, the war is gone, we're, we're good to go. What if it drags on for longer than two weeks? I don't know, they're presuming it's going to take two weeks only for them to start flying over again? Uh, Korean planes are still permitted to fly in Russian skies. The decision was made because aircraft can't refuel in Moscow. Companies there are uh, companies there are having trouble sourcing jet fuel due to sanctions imposed on Russia due to its Ukraine invasion. Um, the carriers fortnightly Incheon Vladivostok uh, passenger flights will fly as scheduled. Okay, so they're flying to Vladivostok but not to Moscow. Yanis <laughs> you. Uh, over three million raised in South Korean donations to Ukraine, Kiev envoy. Um, I think where's the next one here? There is. Uh, I have an article somewhere. Maybe it's for the next month for the next podcast. <clears throat> uh, around seventy million dollars have so far been donated to to the to support Ukraine. Ukraine's top envoy to Seoul said Monday his office has raised over 3 million in donations from South Korea to support Ukrainian uh, efforts in the war against Russia. We will send some of the donated money directly to the National Bank of Ukraine and use some to buy and send food and medicine for, for our people. Ukrainian Ambassador uh, Dmitry Ponomarenko uh, said Ponomarenko. Uh, said as he revealed the amount of donations his embassy received from South Koreans at a forum held at Hankook University, Hankook University of Foreign Studies in Central Seoul. That's pretty good, man. That's massive. I wonder uh, where the donations come from. Uh, I would like to see a list. Is it donated mostly by Koreans or mostly by expats? That's what I would like to know because since we always distinguish between this and that, I think that it, this should rightly be done distinction between who donated more to the cause you know because it's of course it's, it's painting korea as the fantastic nation that it is um having donated so much money but where did that money actually come from it's true citizens or the expat community residing in this country huh huh uh-huh uh, as korea south korea holds transactions with russia's central bank uh that's what's happening also government to provide up to uh what is it 
one, one billion, one billion, one, the companies worth with 30% or more of their exports to Russia. Uh, South Korea has decided to shut down transactions with Russia's central bank and national uh, funds in efforts to uh, join the international movement to impose more sanctions against Moscow while providing state emergency support for companies doing business with the Slavic countries in war. The government said Monday. Seoul's announcement followed the recent series of sanctions by the US and EU to ban transactions with Russia's state non-financial institutions. The Ministry of Economy and Finance said <clears throat> the transaction suspensions against the Central Bank of Russia, Fed Russian Federation, the National Wealth Fund of the Russian Federation and the Russian Direct Investment Fund will take effect from Tuesday. Uh, so that's in today, no, tomorrow, yeah. However, the sanctions exempt from the san uh, what? Transactions exempt from the sanctions under the U.S. Uh, general license, including agricultural goods, COVID-19 medical support and energy, the ministry said such sanctions will be allowed under the same standard. Okay. Uh, there's also SWIFT last week, so that was done last week. Companies that have 30% or more of their exports sent to Russia and Ukraine will be subject to receive up to 1 billion won per firm as the government stabilizing funds for emergency management. Okay, so if you happen to have a company uh, of which 30% or more um, exports into Russia, the government will subsidize you with uh, close to a nifty sum of a million dollars uh, per firm to uh, to offset, I guess, the losses, the 30% of losses that these companies, that your company may suffer as a result of this war. So there you go. Not bad, yeah? Um, Ray Ken. Uh, e. Ken, Re Ken, Re Ken arrives to fight in Ukraine despite government's threat. So this fella uh, is a Navy, I guess, the equivalent of a Navy, Navy SEAL. Um, and he made his way to uh, to Ukraine. Uh, Re Ken, a former Korean Navy Special Warfare Officer, was shot uh, to fame in 2020 after appearing on a popular YouTube military training series, said Monday, he and his team arrived in Ukraine to fight Russia, despite strong objection from Seoul's foreign ministry. Um, arrived in Ukraine, the 37-year-old wrote on Instagram along with a photo of military tent. Thank you for helping South Korea during the 1950-53 Korean War. Now we will help you, he said, man. The war is very different. Uh, I've read stories of people volunteering, not volunteering, but actually moving, flying into, into uh, uh, the Ukraine private private people, I guess people with guns and the will to do so, flying in privately into Ukraine, uh, not as part of a military, but just volunteers, so to speak, I guess, um, to support the army. Uh, people are sending in millions of dollars worth in crypto to support uh, the war. It's crazy, like we live in a very different world right now, right? Um, I remember hearing about, uh, what was it, Blackwater or something like that, that were like these pockets of private, um, uh, what you might call it, private guerrilla troops that were flying into Afghanistan. And I guess something similar is happening right now to, uh, but it was a lot more hush-hush. Now this is kind of more in the open, like people who are willing and wanting to do so, they they're flying into Ukraine to support the the sides that they want. I wonder if there are any people flying into Russia doing the same thing, man. <clears throat> Not that they need it, but still. Uh, in a separate post uploaded minutes before, Ray criticized Korea's Ministry of Foreign Affairs for refusing to support his decision, stressing he would fight on the front lines of Ukraine. Exactly how many people joined him in Ukraine is not known. Ray, who first broke the news about his trip to Ukraine on Sunday via his Instagram, said the pers he personally recruited his team members after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urged people from across the world last week to join his military to fight and defend against Russia. The Sunday Post showed a photo uh, with the backs of three people. So it's him and two of his comrades. Uh, by law, anyone who disobeys a government travel ban can be sent sentenced uh, to up to a year in prison or face a fine of up to 10 million won. Um, so is that what these fellas are maybe facing upon arrival? 
or will they be hailed as heroes? I wonder, hey? On February 27th, the Ukrainian embassy of Seoul posted an announcement issued by the Ukrainian government uh, on its official Facebook account entitled Appeal to Foreign Citizens to Help Ukraine in Fighting Against Russia's Aggression. Uh, but I guess this doesn't apply to Korea's special forces because that's a different pair of boots, yeah? Um, Russia might hold a grudge against that, I guess, so we're entering a different territory. The post, which was written in both Ukrainian and English, read the president of Ukraine uh, is addressing all citizens of the world, friends of Ukraine, peace and democracy. Anyone who wants to join the defense of Ukraine, uh, Europe and the world can come to and fight side by side with the Ukrainians against the Russian war criminals. Man, Ukraine's foreign minister told CNN Sunday that about 20,000 foreigners have applied, mostly from Europe. 20,000 people apparently have applied to support Ukraine, which is basically like 20,000 uh, guerrilla warfare um, volunteers. It's crazy. It's crazy what's happening, man. Man, oh man. Okay, well... Uh, Lisa left a comment. Yep, there are a bunch of regional positions to vote for. Yeah, okay. That's that's the comment relating to uh, Westerners or, or expats being able to uh, vote for local authorities, mayors and, and, and stuff like that. Uh... Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on to some uh, tech tech stuff. Uh, Samsung expected to launch Galaxy A series in mid March. Uh, A series is like the lighter version of the Samsung. It's not the flagship that Samsung uses. Uh, the flagships are usually the uh, uh, what is it? The S twenty one that uh, was recently launched. Before that, it was S twenty um, and whatever the the sevens and eights and tens, Galaxy tens. Uh, but so if this is coming out in March, I wonder when the flagship is gonna be dropped. Samsung's mid-low uh, tier Galaxy A series is forecast to come in various uh, new models. A this, 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 uh, and they're coming out uh, cutting-edge innovation services and features at an accessible price. The prices will be 399 daleros. Uh, these are the 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 ones that uh, usually most of most of the kids around hog ones that I see they carry those. Uh, the kids with uh, you know flagship phones have have uh, expensive tastes and the parents can afford it. Otherwise, you get kids like my kids running around with uh, the cheaper versions because you know we're living in 2022 and no kid gets away without a phone these days. Everybody needs a phone because it's essential to be able to play games whenever you need to. <laughs> my kids never call me the reason they have the phones uh, that's the reason why we got them phones man so they could contact their parents whenever they needed to uh, half the time my son doesn't take his phone to school uh, and essentially the the main purpose of his phone's existence is to allow him play to play games and get upset at me uh, when I tell him not to play games man that's that's the deal that's the dealio uh, rolling party chief attacked with a hammer during a uh, during campaign. So apparently, uh, um, member of the ruling party got smacked with a hammer. Man, uh, a YouTuber in his seventies. Did you know this guy? A YouTuber in his seventies. What the heck, man? Progressive nation attacked the uh, ruling Democratic Party chairman So Young Gil with a hammer during campaign campaigning in Seoul on Monday, causing him injuries requiring stitches in the head, party officials said. Can you imagine this seven-year-old geezer running up? Like, who would suspect it, right? I imagine that he wasn't moving very fast. Whack! Whack! <laughs> with a freaking hammer. Jesus! To the head, too, man. I don't know. Song was campaigning in Seoul's Sinchon area for Wednesday's presidential election when the assailant uh, came up from behind and struck him in the head several times with a hammer wrapped in a black plastic bag. Video footage showed. Man, I wish I could see that video footage. Son of a gun. He wrapped a hammer in a black plastic bag. I guess one of those like disposable bags that you take, you know, you get at stores. Started whacking the guy in the head from the back of his head, man. You can kill him, man. Jesus. Lucky he only got stitches, man. 
Song was rushed to a nearby hospital with bleeding from his head and received stitches, DP said, it, officials said. Yeah, no kidding, what happened? He was in, uh, identified as a 70-year-old YouTuber who was filming with his phone before attacking Song and appearing to have followed the chairman on the ca campaign trail since last month in videos uploaded to YouTube. Police said that they are questioning the suspect uh, on charges of violating the election law and causing bodily harm. Yeah, no shit. According to the eyewitness, the man shouted at the scene that he, oppo he opposes South Korea's US military exercises and cannot stand uh, to leave behind such a world to the youth. Song wrote on Facebook several hours after the attack, I can't bear it. It's a relief the young people who were with me were not injured, he wrote. Please do your best to uh, in your individual capacities. Man, these commies, I tell ya. Uh, All-out battle underway to extinguish East Coast. Oh, how did this get mingled up here? This is oh, so these. So these are the fires going on here. Firefighters getting rid of some of the fires. Helicopters dumping water. Any other pictures? No. Okay. Ah, I think I'm missing some articles. What happened here? No, that's it. That's it. Maybe. Okay. Well. Well, that's it then. Oh my gosh, Lisa says. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, man. What's happening? Like, a 70 year old man, how much anger or insanity must there be inside of him to start whacking with a hammer at at people? I don't care how much you disagree with his policy and, and stuff, man. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right, peeps. <clears throat> That's going to be it. That's going to wrap up <clears throat> this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, once again, if you would like to uh, join Lisa in learning how to work calligraphy, how to do calligraphy, then head over to the link. There is a link below the video. You can go over to the website and to Lisa's website. Sign up here. Uh, if you are interested in participating in the March 24th workshop or April 7th, 21st, um, make sure to sign up ASAP because Lisa sends out, pa sends out packages that arrive at your doorstep and then you can use them uh, in the workshops. The workshops are conducted online, I assume they are live, um, and you will be able to use your little tool to follow Lisa and the instructional guidelines that she provides online, yeah? Yeah, I gotta be careful of those YouTubers, especially the ones that are trying to steal, uh, uh, you know, my Living Korea Thunder. So make sure, again, to smash up the likes, subscribe to the channel, let the YouTube algorithm know that this is the Living Korea channel, not freaking Adrian Hill's past, you know, present and future. Uh, share the love, peeps. Thank you all for supporting. Lise, as always, um, everybody else. Mm, ben, thanks for stopping by. Awesome Victor, thanks for stopping by as well. Uh, have a good night, good evening. Oh, and make sure to stop by at 11 o'clock at uh, Crypto Updates, uh, Market Updates channel for another podcast on crypto updates uh, and what's going on in the crypto world. Have a good night. Good night, good night. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>